hello and thank you for attending our information session covering counseling psychology graduate programs in the Faculty of Education. I'll do some brief introductions. So my name is Susan Pollock. I'm the program manager for graduate programs in education. So that's within the Faculty of Education. And also from our office, we have Courtney Merkel, who is our program specialist. So if you've been reaching out to our office, uh, Courtney is the person that you've probably heard from or Anna Mamo, who's not able to join us today, but uh, the team of us try to, to answer your queries as much as we can. Uh, to the best of our ability. And also joining us today is Hannah Thomas. And Hannah is a graduate recruitment officer at the University of Lethbridge. So thanks for organizing this, Hannah. We really appreciate it. Okay, and uh, Hannah and Courtney, if you'd like to say a word, you're welcome to. Otherwise, we'll just get going. Okay, sounds great. So I'll start off with the UofL territorial statement. So Oki and welcome to the University of Lethbridge. Our university's Blackfoot name is Aniskum, meaning sacred buffalo stone. The university is located in traditional Blackfoot Confederacy territory. We honor the Blackfoot people and their traditional ways of knowing and caring for this land, as well as all Aboriginal peoples who have helped shape and continue to strengthen our university community. A few housekeeping items before we begin. Uh, we'll hold all questions until the question and answer period at the end. Uh, please do write your question in the Q&A section, um, not the chat. So I'm not, I'm actually not sure if folks have, have uh, access to the chat in this webinar version, but um, please do write your questions in the Q&A section so that it remains anonymous uh, for all the rest of the viewers. And your question will be read aloud. And please note that similar questions will be combined. Um, for the sake of uh, keeping things uh, to a reasonable time length. And if the question is very specific to your situation, Courtney will attempt to provide you a written response in the Q&A, or you can send us a note in our contact form, which will be posted at the end of the presentation. And I believe Courtney is going to put that link into the chat as well for you. Okay, so in this information session, we're going to provide an overview of the graduate counseling programs we offer within the Faculty of Education. We'll discuss the features of our programs to help you decide if they meet your needs. We'll review the admission requirements in order that you can determine if you're ready to start your application. We'll examine the components that you need to include within your application. And finally, we will look at potential career paths upon completion of our counseling programs. And we'll wrap things up with a question and answer period. And again, please note that we'll hold all questions until the end of the session. Okay, so uh, first, uh, uh, just a sidebar here. So we often receive questions as to why counseling psychology programs are housed within a faculty of education. And the answer is that the field of counseling psychology grew out of vocational counseling and career counseling. And so it's found in faculties of education throughout much of Canada. So if you're wondering why we have psychology programs within the faculty of education, that's why. And within the faculty of education at the University of Lethbridge, we offer two distinct graduate counseling programs. So the first is the Master of Education Counseling Psychology, and uh, the second is the Master of Counseling program. So looking at some of the features of these programs, um, it'll help decide if it's suitable for you. So first, a huge strength of our program is our cohort model. So students are admitted to a cohort and proceed according to the schedule with their peers, and you're completing your courses together at the same time. So students in each cohort become a support network for each other, and this network lasts far beyond the timelines of the, the program. Secondly, our programs are course-based, so the coursework is aligned with the needs of the field and all work towards competencies required by the professional or regulatory bodies of the field. And courses are taught by qualified faculty with expertise in the area. A third feature that both programs share is that they offer a flexible location for practicum. So students arrange their practicum, providing you with a say in your training. The practicum can be completed across Canada pending approval of the supervisor and the agency. And there is criteria related to that outlined within our Counseling Psychology Practicum Handbook. And uh, Courtney, maybe just a quick ask there if you could post that when you get a chance, that would be great. Uh, students are well oriented before commencing a search for a placement with the help of the program specialist and the clinical coordinator. The so students receive lists of approved sites and supervisors to assist in their search so you are supported through the process. It is worth noting that placements may require a vulnerable sector check or similar additional requirements beyond what's needed in the, the actual practicum. 
Uh, practicum courses include both the placement at the agency and a seminar component. And the seminar component typically involves about four days of virtual meetings with your instructor and peers for each of, uh, each of the practicum courses. Um, a fourth feature of the program is that both the Master of Education Counseling Psychology and Master of Counseling programs align with certification. Specifically, both programs meet the graduate requirements for Canadian Certified Counselor with the Canadian Counseling and Psychotherapy Association and Alberta Registered Psychologist with the College of Alberta Psychologist. And uh, as I'll mention later in the session, we're proud that both of our programs meet the approved programs pathway for the College of Alberta Psychologist. So listening to the features of the programs, um, you know, now, now is the time to ask, well, which of these programs suits my needs? So how are they different? So the main distinguishing feature of the M and Counseling Psychology program is that the first year is offered on campus. The program is two years in duration, resulting in an intense program and is designed for students who are fully immersed in their studies. Uh, the program consists of three components. So there's coursework, practicum placements and a culminating activity. And as you can see, the first year of program is quite intensive with nine courses being completed from July until May. Um, courses are in person on campus, normally offered during the day, and it's not feasible to remain working due to the course load. So it's not designed for individuals to remain working. Um, however, as the practicum location is flexible, the second year affords you the opportunity to complete your practicum in the location of your choosing, pending approval. So your second year of study does not need to be in Lethbridge. Uh, the culminating activity, activity options within the MED Counseling Psychology program include a thesis, project, or capstone. And uh, most students opt for the capstone as it's the fastest pathway to complete your program. However, if you intend to pursue a PhD, a thesis is recommended and completing a thesis or project typically extends your program and it does add to the cost. One thing that sets us apart from many U of L graduate programs is that due to the course-based nature of our program, we do not require applicants to identify a potential supervisor for thesis or project at the time of admission. And uh, so again, we don't need you to identify a supervisor at, at the time of application. Um, an orientation to all of the culminating activity options is held upon starting your program. And this orientation will shed a lot of light on each option. If you decide that you would like to pursue the project or thesis option, you'd wait until your research course is completed before reaching out to faculty members to potentially act as your supervisor. So that gives you a chance to see if research is really truly what you're interested in. So once people have taken the research course, it really gives them an idea of whether or not they're interested in, in following that thesis or project pathway. So those are the main elements of the MED Counseling Psychology Program. Next, let's look at the Master of Counseling program. So the Master of Counseling program is designed for working professionals. Okay, so very distinct from the other program, which is on campus. This one is designed for working professionals. Um, it's intended to help you navigate the challenges of balancing both a master's program and your career at the same time. Our blend of online coursework and face-to-face -face components makes this feasible. And courses are spread out to allow you to continue working and the program is completed in three years. So spread out to allow you a, a longer duration and program to uh, you know, spread those courses over a, a longer period so you can keep working. It's still a challenge to, to fit it all in for sure, but uh, it, uh, you know, students are very successful with that timeline. So like the MED, the Master of Counseling program consists of three components. So we have coursework, a practicum placement and a culminating activity. And relative to the coursework, your summer term consists of online work starting in May, and it wraps up with a summer institute on campus in Lethbridge for two weeks in July. So that intensive summer institute is usually the last two weeks of July, but it can fluctuate a little bit based on um, timelines for the term. Um, but again, starts in May and runs all the way through till the end of July. Um, accommodation options are available on campus for students attending summer institute. So in the fall term, which for us is September to December, and the spring term, which is January to April, courses are completed online in an asynchronous manner. However, you do proceed through the courses together with the peers in your cohort. So you're not doing this completely individually. You're participating uh, with your peers throughout, the, throughout each week of the program. Um, online components could include discussion forum participation, some group work, individual assignments, 
self-study video review is just a few instances of what instructors might assign as part of your, your online learning. Um, you're expected to be consistently engaging with your peers and instructor throughout each week of the course. And typically students, I would say, are active pretty much every day throughout the week. So as mentioned in the program features, the practicum location is flexible and can be completed at a distance. Um, students should commit to about two and a half to three days a week minimum dedicated to their practicum placement though. So while it is designed, the program is designed for working professionals, please know that in the third year of program, you're going to have to reduce your hours at work or take a leave of absence um, in order to manage the workload that's associated with that. So many individuals do take a leave of absence or, or, work the, or reduce their work hours significantly during that time. So, and wrapping up your program is the culminating activity. And in the Master of Counseling program, a professional portfolio is completed as your final culminating activity. And that involves a collection of reflective tasks and a comprehensive professional development plan. So again, we don't have a thesis option in the Master of Counseling program. So if your intended pathway is for a PhD, the MED Counseling Psychology program is the recommended route, not the Master of Counseling. It's more of a terminal practitioner route. Okay, so again, just kind of encapsulating this in a table, we've got the MED Counseling Psychology Program, which is for on-campus students, two years, um, has a, options for culminating activities, and it starts in July. Um, one thing I didn't mention is the cost of the program is just over $15,000 based on the 2023-24 um, fee schedule, not including increases for future years. And that's the domestic rate. So international students should check the fee schedule. Um, and uh, in, in terms of the Master of Counseling, it's designed for working professionals, three-year program uh, with blended delivery and has a professional portfolio as a culminating activity. And that program starts in May and the cost of that program is about $25,000, just shy of $25,000. Both of them share the feature that uh, December 1st application deadline. And again, remember for the Master of Counseling, international students should check the international fee rates. Uh, so hopefully that's provided you with uh, sufficient insights to help you determine which program is the best fit for you. Uh, next, we'll look at the requirements for admission. So it is worth noting that the counseling programs are very competitive. So we do recommend that you only submit your application once you're confident you have at least the minimum requirements. And if you're in doubt about that, you can seek feedback from our office. Uh, we receive over 400 applications for 40 to 50 seats. So it's really not feasible for students to submit uh, an application not meeting the minimum requirements. There's just there's really no possibility of gaining entrance to the program if you don't meet the minimum requirements due to the, the competition. So let's take a look at what the minimum requirements are for admission to our graduate programs. So first you'll need to have completed a baccalaureate, so meaning a four year undergraduate degree and successful applicants have come from a variety of backgrounds. So BA psych, BSc psych, Bachelor of Addictions Counseling, Bachelor of Social Work, of Nursing, Bachelor of Management, B.Ed. We, we've accepted students from all, all walks of life, uh, essentially, um, but those are the programs that are most typical, and particularly the B.A. Psych and B.S.C. Psych are the, the ones that we, um, typically speaking, students are, are coming from those programs. And I'll maybe just note that while a B.Ed. is acceptable background, it's not required. So sometimes people think for the Master of Education program that you need a B.Ed., to get into that, and that's not the case. So a BED is certainly acceptable. It's one of the acceptable programs, but you don't require a BED to get into the MED program. Um, secondly, a minimum GPA of 3.0 is required on a 4.0 scale. And this is calculated on the terms containing the last 20 courses, which have a grade other than pass fail. So if you wanna determine your GPA, simply start with your most recent term and count back until you reach the term containing the 20th course and be sure to include all of the courses that were completed within that term. So you may actually end up with greater than 20 courses being utilized within your GPA calculation. Um, additionally, we do require two years of relevant experience. 
And the best kind of experience is that where you're helping to facilitate change in others or where you're trying to help people with their emotions so that you can determine if you're comfortable dealing with those human emotions. Um, it can be work or volunteer experience, but it does need to be two years full-time experience. Um, so some examples of suitable experience include hotline or crisis line work, any actual helping counseling experience, working at addiction centers, volunteering with a sexual assault center, uh, peer support work, where it could include group home, one-on-one -on -one respite care, youth care, teaching, coaching, etc. All of those things where you're facilitating change in others. And it's also important to ensure that your experience affords you the ability to provide references who are well situated to comment on your potential success in the field. So this means that it's desirable to have supervisors who are in the field of counseling psychology so that they can speak to your likely success in this particular field within their uh, reference letter. Okay, so that's important to, to not just think about your work experience in terms of where you want to work, but also think of how and where you're going to get the, um, the references from. So, you know, putting yourself out in situations where there's individuals within the field who could speak to your potential success in the field of counseling psychology is going to help you. Um, a reminder that part-time experience counts and it's simply prorated. So for instance, if you worked half time for four years, you'd have the equivalent of two years of full-time experience. So you're just going to take that and, and prorate that experience if it's not full-time. Okay, additionally, a breadth of undergraduate courses in psychology is also required. In our admission section, we do recommend specific courses in human development, learning, personality, psychological disorders, and counseling skills. And we are looking for a breadth of undergraduate psychology courses, which will assist you going into your master's. Um, in our experience, without having a minimum of two to three psychology courses, it's very difficult to be successfully admitted. Um, and it is typical for applicants to present more than 12 courses in psychology. So in many cases, they're, they're presenting 16 to 20 courses in psychology. Um, and lastly, if appropriate, English language proficiency will be required. Okay, so that was uh, a listing of the admission requirements for program. Now, you know, once, once we've looked at that, now you need to figure out, uh, you know, we determine you've met or exceeded the admission requirements, you can start to pull together the components required for your application. So what do I need to apply? Uh, please note that the application is completed entirely online. And once you have the following elements ready to upload or include within your application, the process takes only a few minutes and is quite straightforward. So academic transcripts are required for every post-secondary institution you have attended, even if it was just for one course. And as well, even if you have transfer credit that's showing on another uh, institution, so maybe you started out at Medicine Hat College, transferred to University of Alberta, we would still need Medicine Hat College, even though those transfer courses are showing on, on University of Alberta transcript as well. Uh, only unofficial copies are required at the time of application and must be uploaded within your application. Uh, be sure to note every single one of the institutions you've attended uh, within your educational background section and upload transcripts for each. And it's worth noting that official transcripts will only be required if you're admitted to the program. Okay, additionally, three referees are required. Uh, so I'll give you a bit of information about the reference section. So you simply enter the name and email address of the individuals who have agreed to act as a reference for you. Um, please be sure to, act, to ask your referees to act in this capacity in advance. So they're forewarned before they receive the email from us. Um, you don't request a letter from them. So instead, when you enter their information in the application, they'll be sent an email and it will enter their evaluation uh, directly within our online system. Be sure to click the Submit Recommendation Request button so that they receive the email to complete the form. So when you're in the application, when you enter your reference contact information, beside each one, you'll hit Submit Recommendation Request, and that prompts triggers the email to go to them. Uh, you can track the status of your references. So when you log into the CollegeNet application system, you can see the status and can send them a reminder from within the system. So that's really handy. 
Um, remember that the referees need to submit by the December 1st deadline, so please provide them with plenty of notice. Um, I've heard some faculty members receive upwards of 50 requests for references, so give them plenty of time to respond to those accordingly. So many weeks would be, uh, would be helpful for them. Um, we do receive many inquiries regarding what's the, be the best mix of referees between professional and academic. And um, so there is a minimum of two professional references that should be used. So a minimum of two professional, but you can use three. Um, and three, uh, using three professional references would be, for instance, if you've been out of school for a long time and it's difficult to obtain an academic reference. Um, note that you can only include a, a maximum of one academic reference. Okay, so two must be professional, one can be academic, or you can submit all three professional. Um, but keep in mind that, for instance, if you're thinking of, uh, if you had an RA position at an institution and that, per, that faculty member was supervising you, um, you know, in your work, that would actually be considered a professional reference, not an academic, because it, they're actually overseeing you as an employee, not as a student. So academic references would, would be an individual that you took a course from or who supervised you in a thesis, that sort of thing. Um, and as noted relative to your worker volunteer experience, it's important to ensure that your experience affords you the ability to provide references who are situated to comment on your success in the field. So remember that, um, you know, supervisors who are in a field of counseling psychology can speak to your potential success in that field. Okay, another, another item we get asked a lot about, but we don't really provide much feedback on is the letter of intent. So you will also need to upload a letter of intent, and this should clearly outline your interest in the program and your intended career outcome. And that's really the only guidelines that we're giving people. So um, one to two pages is sufficient. We don't have formatting. You don't have to you know, have margins of a certain size. You don't have to have a word count, but one to two pages to keep it concise. Uh, you know, the faculty have... 400 plus applications to review. So, um, you know, making sure that it's not long winded is gonna, is gonna be helpful. Um, yeah, so again, your, your interest in the program and your intended career outcome. So what do you wanna do? What, what do you wanna do in the field when you graduate from the program? Okay, hey, you'll also include a, a curriculum vitae or CV as part of your application. And in case you're not familiar with what that is, it's just really a resume that includes publications. So if you have any publications, you would include that as well. And finally, if required, you'll provide documentation of your English language proficiency test scores. Okay, so if you have all of those pieces in place, you're ready to submit your application. Um, it is worth noting that you can commence your application and go back to finish it at a later date. Um, applications may be submitted up to and including December 1st. And a reminder that references are also due by December 1st. So we recommend commencing at least several weeks prior to that deadline to give you um, the referees sufficient time to submit their, their references. Um, submitting your application earlier is better to make sure that we can get everything in place for you and to allow us to follow up in case there are any questions with your with your file. Okay, we're gonna um, talk a bit now about uh, career paths. So a reminder that we offer two graduate programs. We have the MED Counseling Psychology Program and the Master of Counseling Program. And as I alluded to at the start of the session, um, either lead to Canadian Certified Counselor with the CCPA or to registered psychologist status in Alberta with the College of Alberta Psychologists. Um, so the first career path that we're going to ta talk about is Canadian Certified Counselor. And this is through the Canadian Counseling and Psychotherapy Association, or CCPA, which is a national body certifying counselors. And it is considered the minimum standard for the profession. Um, the CCPA only reviews your graduate work. So they don't look at all at your undergraduate program. They only look at your graduate coursework. And our programs do fulfill the requirements for CCPA certification. So once you've completed our programs, you apply to CCPA and, and you're eligible to certify as a, as a CCC. And it is worth noting that there are also counselor certifying bodies in many provinces that align with the CCPA. So for instance, uh, in BC, it's the BC Association of Clinical Counselors or BCACC, and applicants should be aware of the specific requirements for the body you intend to certify with as they can differ from province to province. So we're really designed for CCPA and CAP 
certification registration. Okay, so in other provinces, there can be other, um, other requirements. Okay, so that was Canadian Certified Counselor and turning in and speaking to registered psychologists. So the second career path our programs prepare you for is in Alberta as a registered psychologist. So within the province of Alberta, this is with the College of Alberta Psychologists or CAP. And CAP looks at your graduate coursework. However, there are other additional requirements. Um, and similar to CCPA, the graduate coursework that you complete in the program meets the graduate requirements for CAP. So once you complete your, your program, the, uh, you know, you can apply for your provisional status and the graduate program requirements will be met with CAP. Um, there are also additional requirements beyond the master's program for College of Alberta psychologists. So that includes 12 undergraduate, a minimum of 12 undergraduate courses in psychology. And again, remember this is for CAP. This is not for entrance into our program. This is for once you've completed your program and you're applying for registration with CAP. So um, in terms of the 12 undergraduate courses in psychology, a few notes worth, uh, worth paying attention to is that the title must include psychology. Uh, the instructor must have a graduate degree in psychology and the course must be intended to prepare students to engage in the practice of psychology. So for instance, courses in programs preparing you to be a child and youth counselor would not have psychology in the title and would have been intended to train you as a child and youth counselor, not a psychologist. So those courses would not count relative to meeting CAP criteria for evaluating academic credentials. Okay, beyond the minimum 12 courses, there's some specific areas, so some substantive content areas that are required. So that includes the biological basis of behavior, social basis of behavior, psychology of the individual, and cognitive effective basis of behavior. And that one's not listed because it's actually covered in our graduate program. So um, you'll have the cognitive effective basis of behavior automatically covered when you are um, completed one of our programs. Um, if you were to go from another institution, though, you would need to ensure that that was in place. So um, I do recommend checking the CAP criteria, so the um, criteria for evaluating academic credentials. And there's specific course descriptions, so they're looking for specific bits of information for each of these substantive content areas. And you should find a course that maps onto what those substantive content areas are. So for instance, psychopharmacology would be one for a biological basis of behavior, but do refer to CAP's website for, for content related to those substantive content areas. So if you have the required undergraduate courses, so those substantive content areas are covered, you've got a minimum of 12 undergraduate psychology courses, and you've completed your MED Counseling Psychology or Master of Counseling degree, then you're ready to apply for your pro, uh, provisional psychologist status with CAP. So again, we're still talking about College of Alberta psychologists. Okay, so after completing your degree, there's still uh, some, still, um, some items that you require. So there's an additional um, hours of supervised training as a provisional psychologist. So that's 1600 additional hours or about a year full time. Um, note that your practicum in program does not count towards this as you cannot begin your provisionally supervised hours until after you have your Alberta provisional psychologist status, which you can't get until after you have completed your master's degree. And additionally, for uh, College of Alberta psychologists, once you get your provisional status, then you will also write an ethics exam and an oral exam. So uh, those are in addition to all the other items that we mentioned. So in Alberta, only once all of those elements have been approved by CAP are you considered a registered psychologist. So in other provinces, a PhD level degree is required to meet registered psychologist requirements, but in the province of Alberta, there's just these additional requirements beyond the master's, so no PhD is required. But again, um, if you're you know, joining us from Ontario and intend to go on to registered psychologist status, um, you know, you want to be thinking about uh, whether or not PhD road is for you, whether or not you're going to practice at the master's level or go on to registered psychologist at the PhD level. Okay, also regarding the College of Alberta psychologists, uh, both our MED Counseling Psychology and Master of Counseling programs are approved program pathways with the College of Alberta psychologists, meaning you have seamless entry into provisional psychologist status. So after being admitted to our program, we would review your situation and determine if you have met all of the undergraduate requirements for the approved programs pathway. So those minimum 12 courses, the substantive content areas, and um, you know, 
those are those are the two pieces we'd be checking. And if so, you'd be considered fast tracked for provisional status. And uh, if you've not met these additional requirements, it's not a problem. You can still meet them. You can still try and take additional courses and, and complete those after your graduate program. Uh, you may opt to stick with a pathway of Canadian Certified Counselor with the Canadian Counseling and Psychotherapy Association and never pursue registered psychologist status. You know, the, the choice is yours. However, the majority of our graduates in Alberta do go on to registered psychologist status. And we do recommend that if you intend to take this pathway, that you plan to do it as quickly as possible upon completing your degree. And there's a couple of reasons for that. So first, it'll help ensure that the requirements haven't changed. So CAP does, um, on a regular basis, upgrade their requirements. And so by, by um, you know finishing your degree and going straight into your provisional status, that helps to alleviate any concerns about uh, whether or not your master's program or the undergraduate requirements uh, were met. And um, it also gives you the best opportunity to pass the intensive exams. So uh, coming directly from your graduate program, you know, you're going to have experience with exam writing and whatnot, and, and uh, that will help you to, um, to pass your oral and your ethics exam. So just a reminder, flipping back to the programs again, a reminder, the MED Counseling Psych was our on-campus two-year program. Master of Counseling was for working professionals and was three years and that both of them meet either the CCPA or the College of Alberta Psychologist requirements for the graduate coursework. Okay, we'll turn things over to the question and answer period and uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if we can maybe answer some questions for you. Um, okay, so I see a question here. Um, I intend to practice as a counselor in BC. Do your counseling programs meet the needs of BCACC? So I did uh, allude to BCACC previously, and we do have many of our students go on to practice as, an, as a registered certified counselor with BCACC. Um, you would be required to complete a group therapy course, which is offered in our Master of Counseling program. So even if you're in the MED Counseling Psychology program, we do open that uh, course up to our MED students. Um, and uh, sim similarly, a family systems therapy course is also required. And that one is one that we don't currently offer within program, but our students have had no problems getting that from an outside source. Um, and uh, so typically they just complete the course at Yorkville and they, they meet the requirements that way. Um, what is interesting is BCACC is also looking at adding an Indigenous cultural safety training course, but that's not yet a requirement. So they did reach out to us uh, recently and ask us if we had any courses in that area um, and we're seeking some feedback feedback on um, including that content within their program so I think in in future years to come you can expect that one as well um, so do keep in mind that our programs are designed to meet the needs specifically of the CCPA on a national basis and CAP in Alberta but having said that, most courses or most programs across North America have far more similarities than differences. So, you know, they all have courses in ethics, interventions, assessment, research, skills, um, practicum, those, those kinds of things. So many, many more similarities than differences. Um, it is really important that you know the requirements of the body with which you intend to certify or register. So, um, and do keep in mind that we have an ethics course, which will delve into that topic as well. So it's really going to look at the ethics of, of where you intend to practice. Um, and you'll also be oriented to registration certification options upon acceptance into the program. So we will have a faculty member go over all of this in detail for you as well. So if you're in admitted into program, we do give you more insight into the situation. Uh, okay, so um, another question here. So uh, what are the required courses for admission? So again, we're looking for a breadth of psychology courses. So um, human development, learning, personality, psychological disorders, and counseling and interpersonal skills are the, the sort of uh, specific areas that we're looking for. But there's no specific prerequisite courses. So we don't, we don't need you to take a specific abnormal site course. We're just looking for a breadth of courses across that spectrum. Um, yeah, so breadth of courses across those topics would be beneficial. Uh, good question here about applying to both programs. So the UofL only allows one application open per term. And because our, our programs both start in the same term, you do have to decide which program you're going to apply to. So it's not possible to uh, apply to both programs at once. 
Okay, so only only one application can be submitted. Um, there's a question about the funding available for students. Um, so there's two main components. Um, the first is is scholarship, and the majority of that is uh, entrance awards. So we do we do distribute about one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year to our faculty of education graduate students. Um, so, you know, it, that's a pretty sizable amount of money for the size of our faculty. Um, and we're always looking to beef up those numbers. So we're all, always in the process of, of trying to obtain additional scholarship funds for students. So we hope to see that number grow. Um, and additionally, students can apply for a graduate assistantship in which they would provide a faculty member with several hours of, of assistance with the research each week and a full-time GA position um, the remuneration is about $7,200, just over seven, I think it's $7,300 and, and change now. So, um, you know, that for a full-time position, that that's um, a good amount of remuneration. Um, what kind of experience counts? So again, it can be work or volunteer. Um, again, they're looking for something where you facilitate change in others or you're dealing with with people's emotions so that you can really figure out if that's something that you want to do with your with your career. Um, a question about accommodations on campus for face-to-face -face sections of the Master of Counseling program. Um, so yes, as a reminder, accommodations are available for a fee for your on-campus components. Um, and Courtney does work with conference services to have rooms set aside for the students and there are a variety of options of rooms. So there's, for instance, one bedroom or multiple bedrooms so you could share with others to reduce the cost. So typically first year students would um, maybe stay in a one bedroom by themselves. And then as they know their cohort, they would uh, they would share the, the uh, apartment with others uh, having their own bedroom and, and washroom and whatnot. Um, Okay, there's a question about uh, they're currently completing their BA psych and will be done in April. Can I apply now? So that will depend if you meet the admission requirements. Uh, so particularly the two years of experience. So if you have met the other admission requirements, then absolutely we recommend you you go ahead and apply. So if you're offered admission, it would be subject to the successful completion of your degree in April. But remember, you need to have two years of experience in order to be eligible. Um, a question, another question about um, something in progress in psychology. So I'm taking an undergraduate course in psychology. Will it count towards my admission requirements? Um, so we can only take into account those courses that appear on your transcript with a final grade as of the December 1st application deadline. So really, unless you're taking an Athabasca University course and it finished in November and you, you know, you have a, a final grade, um, otherwise it's really just summer term courses. So that's the latest that we, we can actually, you know, give you a check mark for, for having psychology courses completed. But having said that, the more undergraduate courses in psychology you have, the better prepared you'll be for your graduate program. So um, they're still worthwhile. Yeah, and, and particularly if you intend to go on to do registered psychologist status and you need those courses, then absolutely you should take as many of those as you can before you uh, start your graduate program to meet the, the 12 minimum. Um, 